another long days of work. Time to relax and watch some cold Gies. Oh man, he's really going for it with the chess. Oh, oh. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I can do that. All right, so let's just sign up for an account. There we go, perfect. And uh, yeah, let's let's load up a game. Bing, bang, boom. This is gonna be so easy, man. I'm telling you, there's no other way. Uh huh? Uh? Wait, I, I, I can't move my king? Oh, well, okay, that's fine. Yeah, what? Huh? Uh? What? 25 blunders? That's ridiculous! I didn't make that! Chess man, I'm telling you, there's no other game like this. There's this lack of luck element within the game that if you win, you feel like an absolute 500 what? IQ genius. But if you what? lose, so well, good. it makes you feel like a piece of crap. And you have no one to blame other than your own stupidity for that. As someone who just plays chess and, according to chess.com, is a top 6% player, no, no. No, it's nothing really. Here's what I recommend for someone who's just getting started with chess and is looking for a new hobby. And of course, I will always give you the fastest way that anybody can do it without too much hard work. But still, we, we need to put in the effort, but just not too much. You know? So, in the first two days, you're going to basically learn the rules. You can't play chess without learning the rules first. So, do some training exercise, you know, know how the pieces move and study up on, you know, the very basics. And once you've got comfortable with that, you can try, you know, playing with some bots first if you're too afraid to play against real players. But just note that the bots behave a bit differently than, you know, the real players do. So, they make weird moves from time to time. It's not recommended that you go against bots, but uh, for the sake of, I guess, getting started, just play some few games. And once you've played those games to get the hang of things, now it's time to move on to something else. So don't get obsessed with learning opening theory or anything at this point. All you're trying to do is you're trying to reinforce how the pieces move, get comfortable with things, looking at the chessboard, etc, etc, getting started like that. So you know what? Just pause this video, come back once you've learned the rules, and you know, keep watching this video once you're done that. So once again, do some training, play some bots, learn how the pieces move, and come back. Now it's time to start playing games against real people. So you're going to stay away from the shorter time controls from now, that means the 3 minute, 1 minute games. Trust me, those are bad for your chess. Start with the longer games, so that means rapid, if you see the green green clock stopwatch thing that just means the 10 to 15 minute range games with zero two second 15 second increment you're going to pick one of those games and you are gonna play some real people so the first step to do with that is to first get your placement matches so on chess.com you're going to play those games and you know depending on if you lose or win those games you'll get assigned a rating and your goal up to 1,000 rating points is essentially try to minimize one move blunders. So what that means is when you're playing the game, try not to lose your queen in one move. And also the best practice for you to do right now is to not resign, ever. It is not about who makes the first blunder, but rather the person who makes the last blunder. You can be winning all your games until one last mistake in the end game where you just lose a rook for some reason. Trust me, I've had that happen a few times. And of course, I would recommend at this stage to learn one opening for both white and black and sort of just stick with it. So as for my recommendations, when you're playing white, a good opening setup is the London system. It's infamous, there's a ton of videos out there, go search one up. And as for black, it's a bit harder, but you can always go for something like a King's Indian Defense, for example. Um, that is pretty solid and gets you out of the opening phase without running into too much trouble. So essentially, what I'm recommending here are setup-based openings. and. These require sort of less theory than 
well, you know, the theory based openings, right? So setup based openings, you play more or less similar to whatever your opponent does. And that's different from theory based openings where you have to just memorize a lot. So at this stage, I would recommend a setup based opening and you can fiddle around with some theory based openings. But again, try to minimize these one move blunders and trust me, you'll be better than most people around your rating. That's your goal right now. So, you know, I'll link a few openings that I would recommend and some instructional videos I would recommend on those openings. But yeah, learn some openings and come back, you know. At this stage, you just need to get a few more games under your belt and get more used to just playing in general. So welcome back. So once you get to a thousand, you are statistically better than the average person playing chess. Congratulations. According to chess.com, apparently the average rapid player is around 800 rating points. So you're 200 points bro. No above that. So congratulations. So you remember in the previous phase where I told you that setup based openings are a good one to practice? Well, you at this stage, it might be worth considering to maybe moving towards more of these theory based openings. Because the setup based openings, the way they're designed is they won't really give you an advantage over let's say, uh, when a player plays a certain way, because there are setups, and they're just designed to get you out of the opening phase as safely as possible. For example, I am an E4 player. Now there are different names of defenses, such as, you know, the Scandinavian, Sicilian, French defense, Karl Kahn, a modern defense, you name it, right? There's also E5, E5. So yeah, when you're playing theory-based openings, this is what you need to know. And also the general game plan for your open. And what that means is basically when you play E4, uh, versus the Scandinavian or versus the Sicilian, you're going to play a certain different way and you have to know what your middle game uh, strategies look like based on your opening. Also, along the way, you should be using the analysis board or the analysis features uh, that chess.com or uh, Lee Chess provides. So by reviewing your mistakes and where you went wrong, it's a very, very handy way and a very good way to improve fast. So what I'm trying to say is use the machines to learn from your mistakes. They play better than us. We should learn. Of course, at this level, there's a bit of a caveat here, which means that sometimes the engine suggests absolutely ridiculous moves that you can't even see or you can't even understand. That you can more or less ignore. But yeah, don't use the engine while you play the game. That's, that's cheating. Don't do that. Uh, use it only after you play the game. So yeah, 1000, you know, focus on not making blunders and maybe consider learning a few theory based openings. And yeah, come back once you're 1200 to see the next step of this video. So 1200, things are gonna start getting a bit harder here. You can't just play mindlessly if you've been doing that, but no, 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 you might not have. Um, it's good that you're thinking. Chess is a game about thinking after all. But the four things that helped me to get from 12 to 13 to 1400 are tactics, openings that put your opponents out of their comfort zone, playing for tricks, and also keeping in mind before I make a move, what my opponents best respond to that move is. So let me go into more of these in detail. So for improving tactics, I would recommend doing puzzles. Now puzzles are basically just scenarios that they set up in order to, I guess, train your mind to recognize sort of patterns and specifically, I guess, winning patterns. Obviously you wouldn't recognize losing patterns. That'd be ridiculous. So for chess.com, go on survival mode and pick the puzzles and just take your time doing these puzzles. You'll recognize them faster and faster as you do more of them. So in regards to openings that take your opponent out of their comfort zone, there is no better way to do that than gambiting stuff. Now a gambit for those of you who don't know is basically when you sacrifice material early on in the game to get a more active position. So imagine this scenario, right? A, a person who plays, let's say the Scandinavian defense, and they're expecting you to follow a certain um, series of best moves. 
and you know they've memorized it all they they're like haha i got you here right but then you whip out something just completely out of the ordinary let's say the icbm gambit which i will touch later on and now they're like well what do i do right and a lot of these times, these gambits are very dangerous. They're very tricky, right? And if the opponent doesn't know what they're doing, you would have a very significant advantage. So basically, gambits put the opponent out of their preparation and then on top of that, put them into your hands, like your preparation. So in other words, they won't know what they're doing, but you would know what you're doing. And that makes it very dangerous. And the best part about this is by learning gambits, you are sort of limiting the amount of memorization you have to do for these theory-based openings, which is tough for us normal folks who don't have a memory of a elephant like the super GMs. Of course, there's a bit of caveat, you know, uh, gambits aren't objectively good, but they work at our level. And that's all that matters. Obviously, you don't see a super grandmaster playing gambits because, you know, the other person, if they know what they're doing, which more often than not they do because they are the top of the top for a reason, you will just have a losing position in like 25 moves. But if that wasn't the case, and if you're just a regular 1300 player, gambits are a great solution and they can allow you to win a lot faster. So for example, I am an E4 player. And remember previously I mentioned that I have to sort of respond differently for every opening such as, you know, E5, Scandinavian, Sicilian, Karl Khan, etc, etc, etc. But with gambits, right, I can essentially memorize one for each and, well, that would be that. So I'm gonna list them here and I just want you to search them up later because uh, explaining them will take a lot of time and there are a lot of people who explain it better. So for E5, I personally like to play the Danish Gambit. It's where you sacrifice three pawns in the opening to get two active and deadly bishops. So against the Sicilian defense, I usually like to play the Wing Gambit. It's where you send the B pawn forward and basically sacrifice it to get them to take off center. So against the Scandinavian defense, I like to play the ICBM variation. I believe that's what it's called. So basically it's a branch of the Tennyson Gambit and there's a very funny YouTube video uh, by the Bohemian Ape Society or, sorry if I'm butchering that name and uh, it's very funny, so go check that out. And finally against the true Gotham subscribers, Karl Khan, I just play a random anti Karl Khan position and just play a normal game. That's not very fun, but uh, anything else is uh, too much variation. And whatever demons play the French defense these days because it's so dry and boring, um, I usually like to spice things up a bit by playing what's called an ortho snap gambit. Now it's where you send the C pawn forward and sacrifice and get your queen on B3 and then hopefully target that F pawn. So by playing these gambits, essentially by challenging the opponent on the very first move and throwing them off of whatever preparation they might have memorized, you're basically just playing an equal game at this point, at worst. But yeah, if I'm playing black uh, against E4, I like to play solidly. I played the Karl Khan uh, when I was 800 to about 1200, and I recently switched it up to Scandinavian defense, but it really doesn't matter. Learn one opening against E4, learn one opening against D4. Against D4, I like to play the England Gambit because there are a lot of London players, and I do not like playing against London. Um, well, don't ask me why, but England Gambit, very tricky, very win it in seven moves line. Again, I'll link a video. So yeah, at this stage, 12 to 13 to 1400, learn some Gambits. They make the game fun and exciting. The more explosive the game is, and uh, you know, you have to do less calculations that way. So it's always more fun for me. And you know, always play to have fun. You don't wanna not have fun in my, Am I, am I right, guys? <laughs> it's not like, it's not okay. But anyways, yeah, yeah, play this game to have fun. Because chess is fun. Repeat after me, chess is fun. But yeah, that'll be all for this video. Um, let me know if you actually make it to 1400 and we'll play a game. I don't want to lose, but uh, 
So, so don't challenge me if you're higher rated. Just, just uh, you know, maybe maybe 1200, 1300 is acceptable. You know, uh, just, just chill if you're like 16, you know, 2000. And, uh, but yeah, with that, I wish you all the luck in getting to 1400. Let me know in the comment sections if you actually made it using my advice. I'd be very sketch if you did. But let me know anyways. And that's how to become a top 6% player. With that, we'll uh, catch you next time. And hopefully you can play chess as well as Lelouch did. Uh, so peace.